Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2022 film Dark Harvest, and I watched it through Vudu. For people who don't know what Vudu is, it's owned by Fandango. It's where you can rent and buy digital movies. Uh, and they usually get them like month, maybe two after they were in the theater, depending on what the film is, how big it is, and how good of a run it has, basically. But they say it's 2023 film, so it's one of those things where... Technically, it was done in 2022, but it came out in 2023, so yeah. And I had heard that this film was actually pretty underrated, and I would say that's accurate. I mean, it's not like an amazing film. I'm not like, you must, must watch this. I do recommend it, though. It is pretty interesting, um, and there's enough good stuff there. There is some stuff that kind of bothers me. It's mainly story-related uh, meandering, but um, I do think it's definitely worth watching. I do think it's underrated, especially because... Nobody talks about this film. I hear basically no one talk about this. Uh, so yeah, definitely underrated for that reason. I think it definitely deserves to be watched. This is a film that's directed by, excuse me, David Slade, who did 30 Days of Night, some episodes of the show Hannibal, Nightmare Cinema, and he did the Bandersnatch episode of Black Mirror. So good filmmaker. And I will say this. The film looks great. I mean, if you've seen any of David Slade's stuff, you know it's going to look good. Although he does have this tendency to not go with like a normal color palette. He'll always kind of change things a little bit. And I wasn't the biggest fan of the color palette in this one, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, the film was written by Michael Gilio, uh, who also wrote Quick Stop and Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves, which I heard was actually really good, and I do want to check that out. I mean, obviously it's not horror, but it looks interesting to me. I'm into nerdy stuff like that. Uh, this is actually based on a book uh, by the same name, um, done by Norman Partridge. So, what is Dark Harvest about? Um, it's basically about a town... A lot of people will make a reference to Children of the Corn. It's basically about a town that has crops, uh, they're a farming community, that has to do a messed up ritual every year in order to make sure that the crops are going to be good for the year. So it's this, you know, literally in the title, Dark Harvest. They have to do really terrible things or one terrible thing in order to get a good harvest. So uh, and it's about that. And it has to do with the, the, the dark aspect of the harvest has to do with the youth of the town. And so it mainly focuses on the youth, but it obviously has the parents involved or the grownups involved as well. Uh, and there, there's a lot of, like, you know, turmoil between the two, in, in a sense. But you'll see what I mean if you do check out the film or if you already watched it, you know what I'm talking about. I don't want to go any further than that because I don't want to give too much away about this film. Uh, the opening voiceover is horribly corny. <laughs> That's one of the things about this film is, like, the some moments are, like, legit good and some are just, like, over the top but in a fun way. And then some of them are just, like not good, and some of them are, like, over the top, not in a fun way, and it's it's a real mixed bag for me, uh, personally, so the way it starts in the beginning doesn't give you the best feeling, because the voiceover in the beginning sounds terrible, it's very over the top, it's very corny, it's very ridiculous, and I was just like, mm, I don't know, but then the first scene that they have after that voiceover is actually very engaging and very interesting and makes you really want to know what really is going on with this town? What's the underlying premise here? Where are we going to take this thing? So, good job there. And, and part of it is the visuals, because like I was saying, Slade does a really good job with the visuals. Uh, there's a lot of extremely shaky camera work from time to time in this, which for me gets very annoying. Prolonged time periods of like really shaky, shaky camera work when it's not fully needed is just like, it's nausea inducing, basically. You know, it's not going to be the case for everyone. But it is for me, so I don't really appreciate that. But I understand it when it's like an intense moment and you get some shaky cam. It actually really helps with the, you know, conveying the feeling of that moment that the character's having to the audience. So it is very effective in that sense. But I, they use it properly. They just have it go on way too long. And when they do use it also, especially in the beginning of the film, it is way too shaky. <laughs> you did not need to shake the camera that freaking much. It's very over the top. Uh, the color palette has a weird leached color that makes it have a yellow tinge kind of to it, uh, which I think was actually intentional to have it make make it seem like it's a, of an older time period because this takes place in the 1960s. Um, so, like, I understand that intention, but I just don't think it looks very good. It looks kind of like, 
just grimy, not in a good way. I don't know. Not not a big fan of that choice. But then there are other moments, because it, it takes place a lot of the time in the dark, where it looks more blue. I like that kind of, like, black and blue look to it. I don't really so much like that, like, intense yellow to it. So, mixed bag. I do like the 1960s setting, uh, because you actually don't get a whole lot of horror films made nowadays that take place in that time period. Obviously, you got plenty of movies that actually were made in the 1960s, but... Nowadays, that's a time period that doesn't really get referenced a whole lot in horror films. Uh, I mean, plenty of films trying to do the 80s, some trying to do the 70s, and like 60s don't really get done a whole lot. So I really do applaud the filmmaker and the writers for, you know, taking on the 1960s. Well, and obviously Norman Partridge for writing the book in the first place. Because I assume his book also takes place in the 1960s. So I like that setting. I like the period. And I think they captured that time period relatively well. Um, although some of the acting is not the best. Um, speaking of which, overall the acting is okay, but there are also some fun kind of over-the-top ridiculous performances. Like I was saying, like there's some stuff in this film that's kind of like good, not so good, <laughs> ridiculous good, and ridiculous bad. And the ridiculous good I had a lot of fun with. There really were a few characters in this film who were played by you know, grown-up actors who <laughs> were um, very over-the-top and ridiculous, but I found a lot of enjoyment in it because they were kind of, like, funny and fun and enjoyable. So if we had more of those characters, I think I would have been even more into it. But, yeah, interesting. Uh, between portions of quickly edited sequences and the score, the film gets injected with a feeling of fun. Now, that's not throughout the entire film. It's more in the first half of the film than it is in the late, late uh, later half. But it is, um, I do like those moments where they kind of like pump in, you know, a more upbeat, fun score. They get some cool, quickly cut montages going on or scenes that seem like kind of frantic. And that really does help kind of pick that pacing back up. Um, that said, about the pacing, the pacing gets really not great in the second half of the film. First half of the film, I think it moves relatively well. Second half of the film, it really slows down. Because like I was saying with the story, it really meanders a lot. You feel like they're trying to put too much into the story that really doesn't need to be in there. There are a few things that really feel like they're kind of shoehorned in and you just don't need but knowing that this actually came from a book, I'm assuming that, you know, the book was a lot bigger. There were a lot more pages written than what the script was, which is a very safe assumption. And there was just so much more, and they had to try and figure out, like, what are we cutting out? And there are certain things that they probably should have cut out altogether instead of whittling, whittling it down to a point where it feels like it doesn't even really matter that much as, as you know, as far as the story goes. Um, there are some really good kills in this. That's one of the things I really like. There's very nice gore. There's some really good effects in it. Practical and CGI kind of mesh together. I really like that about the film. So people who are like gore hounds, uh, you're not going to get like a ton of it, but when it does happen, it's very satisfying. It looks very good and messed up and gruesome. So that's good stuff. And then um, the character of... There, there's an, like an evil character in this. Uh, I don't want to say a name or anything, but if you've seen the trailer or read the synopsis of it, I'm sure you prob probably al already know, but I'm not going to throw it out there. But that is done with practical effects, and I think the design is pretty solid. I like it. It's very much of the time they're trying to get. Um, that is in Halloween, because that's when the film takes place. It takes place in Halloween. Um, and it really makes me wish that I'd actually just watch this film in October because it has really good Halloween vibes to it. They do a good job of putting, you know, like lit jack-o'-lanterns around outside and people wearing masks and stuff like that. So I always like that type of stuff. A bit of a sucker for it. Uh, it does feel like there's so many side tangents that it messes with the overall flow of the movie. Going back to what I was saying about certain things just showing up and not feeling like they're all that important in the film. Really needed to cut that one out. Um, it's dark almost the entire movie, but they actually lit it quite well. You know, I was talking about the blue kind of lighting when it is dark, but another thing to point out is the fact that you don't have any problems seeing what you need to see when it is dark. Uh, that just means that when it comes to lighting, they knew exactly what they were doing because there are plenty of films that have come out where they're shot in darker settings and you can't see what you need to see. And it's literally like, why are we even having this scene? Cause I can't see anything. So 
Nice job on the lighting in this one. Uh, and there is an interesting enough ending. I didn't think it was a like an awesome ending. I didn't think it had like a ton of impact really for me personally, but it um, it was an okay ending. I, I, I was all right with it. Um, there is a bit of a theme of generational control that's placed upon the younger generations in a society and the lack of kind of that older generation who's imposing control kind of not questioning why things are traditionally done the way they are. They just do it. Uh, that's something that's kind of shown up in films like this plenty of times before. Um, and that's definitely a theme there. And, you know, obviously it's kind of always pertinent uh, whenever whenever in, in life because it, the, there always seems to be this issue where the older generations think the younger, younger generations don't know what they're doing and they want to control them and tell them that they shouldn't be allowed to do what they want to do. And then that younger generation becomes an older generation, and then they do it to the younger generations. And it's just a cyclical thing that's really stupid, in my opinion. But anyway, um, th those are my thoughts on Dark Harvest. Out of five stars, half stars in play, I'm going to give it three stars. I thought about three and a half from time to time, but there's too many issues with the story, and it gets slowed down way too much, seems way too meandering. So solid enough three-star rating. I would check it out. I think it's only like six bucks and some change to rent through Vudu, so that's, you know, support, you know, smaller films, it's, it's a good thing. But give me your thoughts in the comments if you've seen this film, did you like it, hate it, in between on it, and just give me a sentence or two letting me know why you feel the way you do about it. And then do me a favor, hit the thumbs up on this, I would appreciate that, hit the subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, because that's the best way to repay me for free content, and you can hit the notification bell button if you want to know when I'm putting up new videos, which I'm doing a good amount, I think. But Regardless, thank you for taking your time to watch this video. I do appreciate that. And until next time, keep it brutal.